welcome to the four o'clock block already. Uh, I'm Jay Fidel, and this is Think Tech, and today we're talking about community matters uh, with Ray Tsuchiyama, informed citizen. And we thought we'd uh, talk about something timely, although there's many other things to talk about. But the most timely thing right now is uh, James Comey, friend or foe. Hi, Ray. Good question <laughs> that you bring up during this time, because uh, uh, through, uh, through the years, uh, the FBI director has been seen as a person above politics, uh, or somebody who has tenure for 10 years or so. And they really are supposed to investigate uh, matters and, uh, within the United States, not go outside, but within the United States, uh, uh, all kinds of things that will be uh, threatening you know, uh, uh, the uh, society, American society. Now recently, including matters that emanate from outside the United States, That's, too. That, that is They're a strange worldwide. thing. worldwide. Well, it's a strange but, evolution. But they do go after spies, uh, and they have been ever since the 30s, especially in the 50s, remember in the post-war era, sure. uh, Hoover uh, went after uh, the communists uh, who were really from Russia, uh, and also people that uh, who were uh, were tagged or, you know, uh, uh, communists, and, and the Whitaker uh, trials and all kinds of things, and, and the McCarthy trials, the army trials, yeah. where they wanted to ferret out traitors uh, to the United States, and they had uh, a huge turnover, and and the destruction of the State Department uh, because of that. Yeah. Well, you know, don't forget uh, that um, uh, Edgar G. Hoover um, was keeping dossiers on politicians for his entire time in office. It made him very powerful, and it made him beyond firing. Nobody could fire him because they, they have to pay a terrible price. Um, and that made the FBI different. It was the power of investigation, the power of information, including negative information on politicians. He created an organ. I mean, the, the FBI is not 100 years old. It's more like 80 or so. It was in the 30s to right. under Roosevelt, I guess. Huh? Um, and uh, he created an organization that was feared in government circles. And uh, I recall also, and this came out recently, that the tenure of the FBI director, at least these days, is 10 years. Hoover was there a lot longer than 10 years. That's right, a very long time. And you go back to a time of the 30s, uh, the, the gangsters, uh, they used to go after. Remember, uh, many of the arrests occurred when they uh, br uh, brought monies or, or tax uh, evasion across state lines. So uh, in those that the state police were very much uh, in, in their own little um, uh, uh, worlds, and the FBI was a federal, federal uh, It rose above. That's right, that's right. And, and that gave, you know, it really brought the country together to think that the corruption at a local level would be, you know, would be superseded by the purity of Elliot Ness and the boys uh, at the federal level. Right, they could come in without uh, uh, being, uh, you know, linked to the politics or the business interests of Chicago or New York or Miami. They could come in as clean G-men, you're right. But there are other countries like Japan and others that have national um, police uh, agencies. They don't have city or uh, county or state uh, yeah. prefectural. Uh, yeah. It's all national police. Is that better? That's a good question, uh, because, again, uh, if you're a national uh, 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 police agency, uh, you'll be sent from uh, New York to serve in Hawaii, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And uh, you would have, again, going, going back to uh, you know, this, uh, this notion of neutrality, that you could investigate any crime uh, that you, could, you would not be uh, you know, influenced by, uh, your friends or uh, family or relatives or politics. And, and that those other countries do not have a, a very uh, localized police force. However, on the other hand, a local police force is uh, they can s see uh, people and, and uh, dealings in the neighborhood. It uh, reminds you know, me of yeah. uh, in, in Japan, of course, uh, we have the little police boxes. Koban, yes. And uh, every policeman knows every person right. on the block. Right. And so if you're not towing the mark, the police will know about that and they'll be able to you know, control it a lot better than if you're a stranger. That's absolutely right. Uh, actually, there have been studies on this. It's an idea, not Japanese. It was came in from Paris. Uh, it's French, uh, like many things in Japan, it's uh, important. Yeah, yeah. But you're absolutely right. In fact, uh, when I moved to a neighborhood, this is, it goes back to the mid-70s when I was a student, 
uh, a little old lady came by and asked me who I was. And she would take down who she was. Uh, yeah, and then she would bring this information to the local policeman. And when I saw the policeman, he knew everything about me. And it's that good or bad, uh, but he knows that I am of the neighborhood and I'm not a, you know, robber. Uh, and in in many cases, we in Hawaii or uh, ma many cities in Honolulu or, uh, or Miami, we don't know our neighbors. We really don't know our, right. you know, our neighborhood. But in uh, Japan, better. there's there's a, another thing. You do know your neighbor. Yeah, at least uh, the through, through the police. You're right. Yeah. So I mean, you know, police. Uh, police is it's a word that has negative connotation, positive. Look at all the trouble about the police. Uh, you know, in the racial context in this country right, right. right now. Oh, gee whiz, uh, I wouldn't want to be a policeman. Actually, um, they're at great risk, and nobody likes them. Um, and the FBI has managed to maintain this high-level thing. I'm, I, I'm not sure that, that Edgar, who, Edgar Hoover built right. the FBI, right. but some of the things he did, I don't think they do anymore. I hope they don't do anymore. And then after 9-11, you know, there was all this trouble about black boxes and spying on people. And I want to tell you about the uh, 60 Minutes uh, okay. episode right. last night, because James, Co James Comey was on it. But oh. this was before Oh, gee, this is uh, 2012 or so. He was the director of the FBI, and he was ruminating about his philosophy over the FBI. And he sure seemed like a good uh, law enforcement officer. He had the right idea about the Constitution. Um, he had sacrificed, or at least threatened to, he had quit or threatened to quit when uh, George W. Bush was doing something about surveilling, surveillance on citizens back uh, after 9-11. Uh, that, that earns him uh, our admiration. Um, he protected the Constitution. He was not going to buy into W's uh, efforts to um, surveil everyone. Uh, and you got to give him credit for that. He presented very well in, uh, in, in the uh, 60 Minutes uh, segment last night. And I, they didn't say any more about it. They just played this old interview, and you can make your own conclusions. Right, right. But the conclusion that most people would make is he's a pretty good guy. Okay, okay. What, what I, where I get concerned is, uh, you know, in the course of this recent election, where he made these, um, you know, strange statements about investigation happening or not happening right. over Hillary Clinton's email. That was really unprecedented for the FBI director to get up there and make statements that he knew he had to know would have an effect on the election. And ultimately, I think they did have at least some significant effect on the election. Um, and I don't understand why he did that, especially in light of the interview that we saw on 60 Minutes last night, where he presented as a guy who, you know, was not going to go off half-cocked. But I think he did go off half-cocked during the Hillary Clinton effort, yeah? So, it's, so what I'm hearing from you, Jay, he is a very complex character. Uh, far, far more complex than uh, you can see him on one light, which is a protector of the Constitution, but you can see another light in that he uh, went out of his way to sway an election. <laughs> well, I think he, th th that and may be extremes. overstating. There's I mean, a, he, very extreme. He, he thought, uh, my guess is from what he said at the time over the several months ago, uh, he was doing the right thing. He thought he's protecting the United States. He's uh, that's his that's his orientation, as we saw in 60 Minutes. I I don't think he went over the you know I, I don't think he intended to hurt her, but he did know that he was going to hurt her. So I don't know if that's distinguishable. And, and, but why don't we go back? Uh, uh, you know about the law more than I do. The, the FBI as an agency. Uh, is it truly independent, or like uh, some people say, it reports to the Department of Justice? Uh, does Comey have a uh, boss? Who, who is that? Or, yeah. or does he uh, uh, kind of uh, do things uh, according to what he feels is right, uh, according to the Constitution Ooh. and the mission of the FBI? Well, both. I oh. mean, I, I think he, he feels that he's independent. And indeed, the FBI uh, director has been relatively independent up to this time. Um, and he, he reports to, uh, to use that term, 
um, some deputy attorney general in, right. in the right. uh, Justice Department who is, I wouldn't say his boss, but somebody he reports to. Um, there's got to be somebody he reports to. Because in the to. end, uh, uh, the FBI doesn't prosecute. The Department of Justice prosecutes. Right, so he's got to so, feed his information so up there. So he brings a package of and evidence. And they make a decision. And, and say uh, this kind of uh, is leading toward this kind of uh, uh, what we think is a crime uh, or is kind of like uh, uh, in that direction. Uh, you have to make your own judgment. And if you uh, feel that you have a case, uh, we'll help you uh, make that case. Am I, am I correct? Yeah, well, right, exactly. It reports uh, you know, to the Department of Justice, which makes the decision as to whether to prosecute. That's the way it works with any law enforcement agency will report to the, you know, the attorneys. And in the case of uh, Honolulu, it would be the, the prosecutor who decides whether to prosecute, and then they go to court. And but the, why would he then, as you said, go on TV and say, we have a lot of material, we, remo we re uh, reviewed it, but we're not going to prosecute. I, and, 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 uh, but why would anybody go on TV to say, to say we're not going to do something and, and makes everybody think that there is something? Right. But that's, 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 well, I think a lot of people felt that way, and I don't know why he did that. And frankly, nobody had done that before, right. no, it, it, and it, it seemed to me, anyway, to be manipulative, and I didn't understand why. People were calling him names. Certainly, Democrats were calling him names. Uh, every time he did that, he <clears throat> did it a couple times. That's right. Um, and so now, you know, we have this strange circumstance with Donald Trump. Trump, who should be appreciative for, <laughs> right. for Comey's public remarks during the campaign, uh, fires him. Okay? He fires him. Um, and th that is really strange. Um, in, in, in if you look at it through Donald Trump's ostensible right. eyes, because there was really no good reason to fire him. <clears throat> you know, he didn't come up with anything. I mean, it's amazing how sometimes public officials fire other public officials, and you ask them for a reason, they don't have a reason. In this case, Donald Trump kept shifting reasons. He's probably still shifting reasons. But the real reason, Ray, between you and me and anybody who's listening, the real reason is Russia. <laughs> the real reason is Comey is, was, was doing an investigation about Trump's involvement in Russia, and that's the hot button. That's the Watergate of, uh, of Trump's administration. And I think Trump was getting very uncomfortable. In fact, if you look at Trump's conduct over the past 90, 100 days, you find that a lot of things he has done are obviously things to distract the public from the biggest issue of all, and that is whether he was, whether the election was manipulated by the Russians. I mean, for example, when he got up in March and said, Obama was uh, was tapping his phone with no evidence. He never supplied any evidence. And everybody said, what is this? Well, I think the answer is clear. He was trying to distract everybody from the big problem, his big problem, which is the Russians. What do you think about that? Well, that's a good uh, question still, because um, uh, he, he has had many surrogates and many people uh, in, in the Republican Party and others say that, that that's a great line, but where is the evidence? Where is the evidence? There, there's not you mean about Obama. Uh, well, uh, about Russia, about about Russia, and and uh, uh, can you point to uh, a case where um, uh, Russia has been determined the you know that th this person A or this person B uh, did the hacking or you know did something that is uh, is uh, part of the FBI evidence? Uh, obviously, uh, they're not going to release this because they're doing an investigation right now. Uh, but to the uh, uh, to the supporters of Trump and uh, people there, they, they said, well, you know, uh, the president makes his own decisions about who are the um, uh, leaders in, in his cabinet or administration, and he can put in another person any time uh, that he wants. Uh, so, and there has Except been, that hasn't really happened with the FBI. The FBI has stood the time, the test of time. That hasn't happened before. I don't yes, think anybody Yes, that's right. He was in year three the of a ten-year, typically a ten-year, a ten-year, typically yeah. uh, ten years, and that's supposed to, you know, go beyond four-year term. So uh, ten years is uh, goes uh, over uh, several administrations. You're right. So and so the, and and the uh, next question I haven't seen in the news yet, uh, of course, is who takes over the the post as FBI director, and that will be very telling because the next person comes in will have to pick up the pieces of the investigation or says, oh, there's nothing there, and why why you know uh, why uh, continue it? So that that is a, a very big uh, name that will be coming up very shortly.
Yeah, it will be, uh, well, maybe very shortly. Right now, is the, the deputy is, is the acting FBI, right. and he doesn't particularly like Trump. <clears throat> and he, uh, although it, the reports are a little mixed, the uh, fact is it seems like um, the, the agents in the field, the staffing in the FBI liked Comey, and they like this guy, too. So the FBI, FBI is like, you know, getting together on this and making a united front on it. Um, I, you know, I don't know what the evidence might be about Russia. Uh, who knows? I mean, remember the dossier? They never proved or didn't prove right, that. Right, yeah. um, <clears throat> and remember, you know, the, the hacking claims of hacking. But, you know, and remember, there were people who felt, and I'm not sure there's any evidence of this, that there was, you know, ballot box manipulation and computer manipulation of the, of the votes. Right. I, don't, I don't know if there's anything to that. But I think if you found that he was in league with Russia, he was talking with Vladimir Putin and his people, there was a lot of communication going on uh, between the Trump campaign and Trump himself uh, and the Russians. Um, he said that's entirely inappropriate. Whether it was effective or not, whether it went as far as he would have liked to have seen it go, whether it was a material element in the, in the actual voting in the country, if he had tried to manipulate by using his some kind of alliance, some kind of affiliation uh, with Russia, that would be really bad. And I would suggest to you that is a ground for impeachment if they can find that existed. But I, I think it's going to be hard for them to find that. Now, I'm sure they're working on it. I'm sure that Comey was working on it plenty hard for whatever his reasons. Maybe he just likes raw meat stories. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you know one thing, Ray, <clears throat> is that um, this we cannot afford to have. And um, but the, on the other hand, just like the uh, WannaCry virus that's going around, you know, the ransomware right, virus, right. it's very hard to actually get the goods. That's right. They're not going to right. catch anybody so quick. And they're not going to catch anybody so quick who, who was, um, you know, um, d d conspiring with, with Putin and his people. But there is, there is a very interesting possibility for how this might come to light. And right after this break, Ray, we're going to explore the likelihood that that will happen. Change everything. I'll look forward to it. Okay, we're back. We're live. Uh, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Community Matters. We're talking about James Comey of the FBI, friend or fo formerly of the FBI, friend or foe. And my, my co-host is Ray Tsushima, and he is an informed citizen. And we're talking about, gee, you know, what is the connection between, obvious, I think, the connection between the firing of James Comey and the Russian investigation, the investigation over Russia. So, uh, and I... I was saying before the break, I think it's going to be very hard for Comey or anyone else, the whole FBI, to find, you know, the whole picture about what was going on with Russia. And I, and I suggest to you this. Um, there's the possibility, in fact, I would guess the fact that somebody in the Trump campaign and or the Trump administration, okay, has the goods. They were there. They were involved in the communications. Maybe it's Flynn. Huh? Yeah. They were involved in the communications. They know exactly what happened, and they hold the keys to that kingdom. They hold the keys to the continuation of his presidency. They hold the keys to the possibility of an impeachment. They know 
Okay. And that 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 is an analogous to a person called Deep Throat. Exactly. That's <laughs> exactly the water right. Uh, That's exactly and and right. for years we didn't know who that person is, uh, uh, and uh, we found out later it was a person high in the FBI ranks. In fact, uh, and we didn't know this until. And this was a mysterious character, who uh, spoke to uh, the two um, Washington Post reporters. I believe in a parking garage somewhere in the uh, DC area. Just like in the movie. Yeah, in, in, a, in a shadowy kind of thing. And uh, don't use my name, but this is what's happening. Yeah. And and what he says is follow the money. Of course, that's the other thing. And uh, and of course, when this uh, Watergate um, uh, incident uh, first arose, mm -hmm. you know, uh, people thought, why would uh, why would burglars have phone numbers of Republican? National Re-election Committee uh, leadership. That, that was very strange. And why would they be former CIA agents? And why were they involved in the Bay of Pigs? And and so forth. So it was a. Uh, and of course, uh, the person who really began to uh, uh, talk from the administration was John Dean. And and he would uh, speak before the uh, Congress, and uh, that would be used to uh, send people like Haldeman, Ehrlichman to uh, to jail uh, later on. But you're correct that this person hasn't come out yet, but I, reporters are, of course, want to <laughs> discover this uh, person who has the ability to understand what's really happening within the administration. You can't have somebody outside the administration, you have to have somebody I inside. Yeah. What was the name of that team of reporters? Uh, I keep thinking of Robert Redford and <laughs> Bernstein. And Woodward. Woodward, yes. Woodward and Bernstein. Yes. And they kept pressing on it. That's they right. knew there was something there. They knew there was fire behind the smoke. And they and they found the query whether and, and, they would have cracked that case yeah. if they hadn't been so ardent yeah. and there hadn't been a deep throat. That's right. I'm not sure it That's ever two, have uh, been two, cracked. And, and you're correct that the editor said, why investigate this bungled burglary, it, it's nothing, and these people will go to jail, and may, maybe they're connected to this mid-level person, and so forth. You're, you're absolutely right. And it took down the, uh, the, the presidency, and uh, he, he left for California, and it ushered in uh, Gerald Ford, and then uh, the Republicans really went down in, uh, in, in voter you know, uh, popularity, and that would usher in uh, Carter. Right, and 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 then comes the Tehran crisis, and that would uh, immediately uh, bring voters to the other side, and that would bring in Ronald Reagan, Reagan. Ronald Reagan, yeah. who, and, who, who brought them back. <laughs> right, and and uh, Ronald Reagan would stay in for two terms, and that what that would lead into, of course, uh, the Bush and and uh, his son, uh, I mean the Clinton, and then the Clintons. But you're right that uh, that that was uh, unfortunately uh, would overshadow. And and uh, uh, really uh, uh, put acts of uh, President Nixon that we would remember him more of, be, uh, like the opening of China, you know, uh, and so forth, and in foreign policy that he was uh, engaged with Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong and a, and a coal uh, politburo in China loved President Nixon <laughs> in, a, in a strange way. They couldn't understand what this domestic— He was the least likely guy to, right. to be friends with China, and yet there it was. Ah. He put yeah, himself right. in history, but his name is not remembered that's for right. that primarily, right. as you said. Right. It's remembered for Watergate, and I think that's the Russian gate here is going to is going to be what brings Trump down. He's trying so hard to avoid that investigation. So uh, going back to Comey, I mean, uh, obviously he knows something because he was uh, part of this investigation. Uh, will he come out and speak, you think? Very good question. Very good question. Because, I mean, he's not dissimilar from the deep throat guy that I mentioned earlier, who, who lives either right now in the Trump administration or was in the Trump campaign, and who is out there, Ray. I'm telling you, it's not a surprise. It's not magic. He's out there. He knows what happened, and he could bring this administration down. Frankly, I wouldn't want to be him because. Trump knows who it is. Trump knows all the people. He knows who's likely and who's not likely. I wouldn't want to be this guy. Of course not, because yeah. uh, nobody likes a tattletale <laughs> yeah. and a snitch, uh, as you know, in prison or in the society. 
And also that uh, the president, uh, um, like Nixon, uh, puts a premium on loyalty, uh, on uh, loyalty to him. Uh, to the, but I see that not only as a uh, Nixonesque or Trumpist kind of, uh, you know, value. There are many people in the corporate world or the government that are like that. And they would have, you know, are, are you loyal to me? I don't care what you do in, in uh, for work. Right. But if you, build their power that th way. That's right. And it's unfortunate that there are many organizations that run on that uh, that, that kind of criteria for uh, for working there. And, so, but the crazier you know, Trump gets, the more wild things he does. Obviously, he's alienating some of the Republicans already now. That's been happening little by little, but now I think it's more in the open. He's also going to scare these people who have the inside information, and they're not going to see the necessity for loyalty. Matter of fact, you know, they're going to turn the other way, and they're going to see the necessity historically of bringing this information to the fore. But your question was, call me. <laughs> right. Is call me going to reveal right. this? Right. Well, he may not know yet. He may only have suspicions. I mean, the, the FBI investigative process doesn't move that fast. He may not have any confirmed information. He may have the same thoughts that you and I have, and he may believe there's a deep throat in there somewhere, but whether they found him or not, I, I guess they're looking really hard. <clears throat> but Comey is the kind of guy, if you look at that 60 Minutes segment, who I don't think he would reveal this. He would see it as his his duty, even after leaving office, of not revealing what he learned in a confidential setting. Although, you know, what works against that is the kind of remarks he made about Hillary Clinton. <laughs> that works against that. So it's not entirely clear what he will do, but he's a free bird now, a free agent. I wonder if it's against the law for Comey to speak publicly uh, very good about point. an investigation yeah, very that he point. was supervising. That's right, yeah. that's right, uh, now in open. And, and uh, usually when you leave organizations, you sign a kind of a, a agreement that, uh, you know, you hold everything secret, what you, what you knew, and won't take it to another organization. Uh, Comey, to me, is an interesting character also, is that he, um, from the time he was in college, he's very philosophical. He studied philosophy, yeah. and uh, he's very strong Catholic also. Yeah. So uh, these, uh, remember in Nazi Germany and, and other countries, uh, people who uh, were against the regime and uh, were strong Catholics, mm. interestingly, mm. Uh, religious, uh, uh, that they saw that they couldn't be loyal to a person of the material world. Uh, but uh, they had a um, you know distinct um, uh, relationship with with uh, with, with God uh, yeah, yeah. through the church. So um, I think he's very principled. Yeah, that's what and I'm it trying all to shows get through. through. He's yeah. very principled, and I, I don't know if it's the law, or the custom. I just don't expect that he's because it's so hot. He's not going to come out with this. Right. That doesn't mean that somebody else who was involved in the investigation in the FBI won't come out with it. And it doesn't mean the FBI, you know, if it finishes a report, won't come out with that report. But the biggest question in town, Ray, is will the next director be compromised? Uh, yeah. You know, if you were Donald yeah. Trump, uh, oh, I hate this part of it. If you were Donald Trump, um, you would select the next director on the basis of whether you could compromise him well, and have an understanding, maybe a dinner, with or without yeah, a tape recorder yeah, working, uh, where he agrees that he's you know, not going to hurt you. It's, it's, it's loyalty, uh, loyalty uh, to uh, the president, uh, leader, uh, and, and because uh, as a leader, you uh, really believe you're doing the right thing. We, you have to understand that. Right or wrong. <laughs> but you have to understand that. All leaders believe that they're uh, doing the right thing for the society, organization, and so forth. And so, and they come in with their own principles, uh, very much. Uh, and, and people say, oh, this person has no principles. No, there are principles that guide uh, leaders. could be perverse, though. Well, but guide leaders, and there are people who want to execute or implement uh, the leaders' uh, programs, and you see that in any organization. Uh, and, but, you're, but I'm trying to say this, that I think that a person who um, may rebel against this or may have insights to uh, all this uh, and come outside is a person of deep religious faith to me. Mm. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, and and um, you can have many people, most people uh, uh, who are not uh, deeply religious go about their daily life without thinking about, uh, about religion or God or, or faith or something. But a person deep religious faith feels that he's, it's impossible to live 
impossible to live one's life uh, by, uh, by, uh, by really destroying the principles that they're stamping on the morals of, of, of their faith. It's a hierarchical thing. That's, that's right. And so I think what I hear you saying is that Trump is going to pick somebody who is like that. He's going to pick somebody who will be loyal to him no matter what, you know, blind loyalty, and who in the process is going to kill that investigation so the truth never comes out about Russia. And that, to me, is a fair likelihood, because I think if I were Trump, if you were Trump, what would you do? You would try to kill the investigation. This guy has the keys to the investigation. Try to get somebody in there who will not continue the investigation. So many ways you could screw up an investigation investigation in the public mind and also, you know, within the agency so that it never actually gets finished. And I think this this football could be kicked around the field for three and a half years. Well, it's a, it will be interesting to have a, a, the same discussion five years from now and see what did this uh, Mr. Comey symbolize, uh, you know, uh, in history. Well, yeah. What does that impact? Right. Is it the beginning of the end, or just uh, a part of many things that would uh, be part of history? And again, we don't really remember uh, in, in Watergate. You saw, you know, the turning of certain people, like a John Dean and so forth, and that accelerated the whole um, uh, whole downfall of that administration. Is Comey the one, or uh, there are others th that? Would Will make Comey, um, you know, who's that? You know, oh yeah, he, he was fired, but there's other people who came out of the woodwork in the next year or two years that really have much more greater historical um, impact. Yeah, and I think up till now, up till a few weeks ago, well, up to the remarks he made about Hillary Clinton, that made him pretty popular or famous, not popular. Um, it seems to me that he was a, sort of the gray suit. He was a federal yeah. prosecutor, yeah. federal investigator. Yeah. Nobody, in, you know, in the community really knew who this guy was. But now he has emerged, um, and now, 60 minutes or otherwise, he is known in the minds of most Americans for the guy who right. Trump fired. And firing, of course, is out of the apprentice right. from back when, <laughs> right. you know. Firing is what Trump likes to and, do. And, but remember, Archibald Cox went through that uh, special prosecutor firing. Right. And people of our age and so forth do remember that Saturday Night uh, Massacre. Right. And that was, you know, where were you? You, you remember that kind of, right. you know, at that time. Just like Kennedy's assassination, you know, there's some points. Will we, will we remember Comey's firing in that huge historical I think historical we will. Life? I think Comey is now a piece of American history. Oh. I think he will be remain, remembered for years and years, uh, right or wrong, but standing up for what he says he believed in and all that, and being fired for very questionable reasons. But to predict, in, a, in the minute or two we have left, yeah. to predict what's going to happen here, um, I don't think he's going to talk publicly about what, right. what's going on. Other people within the agency may find a way to do that or plant information. You know how they <laughs> leak information and whatnot. Who knows? Maybe it'll be on WikiLeaks. Who knows? Keep, keep tuned. Um, but I think that somewhere, and, and Trump will try to douse this investigation in every way he can. He will try to distract us with the most cockamamie things every day and, and get on the headlines with 27 things that the press buys into before you know, they keep going back, they should go back to the basic question of what happened with Russia. Finally, I think that somebody will surface. I'd like to see it sooner than later, but somebody will surface who knows what happened, and we will get to see that person, too. And that person will also be a name in history in this country. These are exciting times. In fact, faithful to our discussion of China these days with you and Russell Liu, these are interesting times. <laughs> <laughs> That's a curse, though. <laughs> I know. Because we don't know. Uh, you know, uh, this, this uh, unknowability of the future. Uh, I mean, I go back to 1970 when all of Hawaii was doing uh, Hawaii 2000. They were trying to project Hawaii 30 years. We can't project, uh, project in Hawaii three years into the future. It will be uh, more the same, but worse. <laughs> you see how depressing that is for it Hawaii? It is. And this yeah. is depressing because <laughs> as much as we were would like to see the truth come out here, Ray, and this is the point to close on. Okay. We can't be confident that it will ever come out. Well. It could be that humanity never <laughs> finds out what Trump did. He's working hard for that, and that is a, a real distinct possibility. I hope we find out, but there's a possibility we never will. Never. I'm sorry to say.
Well, we'll see. We'll history see. Will, uh, history will tell. We'll uh, follow the story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Thank so you. She, I'm an informed citizen here on ThinkTech Community Matters. Thank you.